Anthony Edwards says he eats about 21 bags of Chester's flaming hot fries a week. Oh, Pepto, give him all of the money. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning and welcome to the latest edition of Run It Back. We are going to introduce everyone right now, as always, Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania. I'm going to go with Eddie G on the end because Chandler, America's favorite dog lover, uh, I'd like to go ahead and check on the pup. Is everything good there? Yeah, he's alive and kicking. Did you get any heat more than what we all sent you over and over again? You know what? I thought the Yuda, I really climaxed of the hate, the... the (laughs) The, the dog lovers and LeBron Colt were on my head all night long. Oh, man. I didn't even have time to react to the dog part. I just was caught off guard. But uh, well done, sir. Let's see who we can offend today. Um, I'm sure you'll find something somewhere in this whole entire show. So we'll get things started with uh, Don't Look Now, another 50 spot. Good Lord. It's becoming almost boring, dare I say. Luca with 53 in a win over Detroit. 18 of uh, first 20 points for his team, 24 of their first 30. You know, just as the sun will come up today, I have to ask. His usage is over 38%. Chandler, come on. This is not going to work, right? There's no way this can work. It's really tough. And it's the same song and dance that we've been talking about all season long with the Mavs. And to score 24 points, that's that's the most anyone scored this season, I think, in the first quarter. It's impressive. And the way he scores, it's amazing. And, And by the way, the team needs it. But this is extremely concerning that... They're squeaking out games against a team like the Pistons. And one other guy on the roster has double digits with Spencer Denbody with 12 points. So it's as impressive as it is. It is concerning. And again, it's I love watching the way he scores, the way he does it. It's it's unbelievable. And it's out of this world. And he's having an unbelievable season. Uh, I, I just worry that, you know, this it's it's very, very hard to sustain. It's very much impossible to have the ball in your hands that much and not be exhausted come the stretch or not be exhausted in the playoffs so listen at the end of the day he's back in the lineup after missing a couple games and he he dropped 53 points and they won the game so that's great for them but the use (laughs) rate is getting out of control for this team you know what's crazy is i watch luca and i enjoy him as much as everybody else but i also have and i'm not exaggerating zero expectation for them come playoff time zero i can't even convince myself that it will will go differently and we talked so much yesterday about Jokic and Embiid and the MVP race right now uh Doncic is sitting third favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook uh Eddie I'm gonna put you under here are you well that sounded awful didn't it uh under the spotlight make a case make a case for Luca still at this point for MVP I mean, if we're going to be literal and say the most valuable player, they needed all of those 54 points from him to beat the worst team in the league, the team with the most amount of losses in the league. Uh, You know, Spencer Dinwiddie had the Swish Parker 12 points to chip in. That was about it. Uh, it, You know, if if we're talking the most valuable, what is this team without him? Can they even get into their offense without him? Who is even their backup point guard if he's not on the court? It's it's a little ridiculous. And the precedent has been set. You can win the MVP as a six seed. Russell Westbrook did it. Nikola Jokic did it. And if you're saying most valuable, if you remove him, who else hurts more in this league? Uh, it's it's very interesting. I mean, we'll talk about another guy who I think should get similar MVP votes for the same exact reason. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's a strong argument. And, and his, his stats are gaudy. And they've somehow won enough games to be a playoff team. No play in the actual playoff team. He's got an argument. I think the two big fellas are ahead of him. But we still got a couple months left in the season. He can still get that MVP. Yeah, you're, if you're taking it quite literally, I, I suppose that's it. Look, there was some weird chirping going on from an assistant coach, uh, Jerome Allen. And Luca said from the first quarter, he was just chirping. I don't know the last time if I've seen this at some point, but, I, you know, Chandler, why would you give this dude any extra incentive? Yeah, I, I remember when I was a rookie and I wasn't playing that much, I got into it with Kobe one time. And and I remember the bets on my team, like Marcus Camby, Sam Dallenberry, Earl Boinkins. These guys were looking at me genuinely pissed off at me because <laughs> you don't want to give someone like Luca, you don't want to give someone like Kobe, you don't want to give someone like KD any extra incentive, any more motivation to go and absolutely dominate you, which is ultimately what he did. And 
Uh, obviously, this is late in the game. And, and listen, Luca talks a lot of trash. Luca gets into it. He gets into it with the refs. This is kind of part of his DNA at this point. But yeah, the assistant, the assistant coach coming off the bench, kind of walking up on him like this. This is you don't see this very often. Oh, so weird. Eddie. Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, assistant coaches, they bark. And, and I, I wouldn't bark at the best player in the game at the moment. Uh, it, it, I love Luca asking, who are you? Because I'm almost positive Luca has no clue who he actually is. And it makes it that much funnier. But yeah, don't, don't, don't kick the bear. There's no reason. You're already the worst team in the league. Why well, inside this? It's actually kind of shocking that you're even playing this team as close as you are. Why, why piss this guy off when you don't need to? And then he gives you a 50 ball, and now you're going home upset, even more <laughs> mad than you were. I don't know what his beef was with Luka. Luka seems to be a mostly cool guy. He, he chirps and he barks all game, but that's hoop. It, this, this, was, this was strange. When I realized he wasn't talking to a player on the bench, he was talking to a coach, I was like, why, why is this happening? By, by the way, I almost feel bad that we sort of mocked Isaiah Livers yesterday. Who could have thought that 24 hours later, Luca would literally be asking, who are you <laughs> to the guy? Like that's, that's a little bit rough. Um, and shout out to the dancers for doing their best to distract us from what was going on back there. All right, Dorian Finney-Smith, I know that it's fast approaching trade deadline. Everybody's going to try to figure out something to do to give them one extra step moving. Shams, a- any likelihood? What can we possibly expect from the Mavericks? Well, on, on Luka Doncic, listen, I love his play. Um, I love what he's done. Uh, but it's clear that this team needs help. Like, they need other players to score. Spencer Dewey, he can't just be your second leading scorer at 12 points on a night. Uh, Luka Doncic's usage rating. I, I'm just curious from a player perspective, like, how much is it that he might not be empowering his other teammates? The other night, Spencer Dinwiddie went off for 30, I think 36 and 7. So they have players that have shown, you know, if you have the ball in your hands, like a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, we'll see when Christian Wood gets back on the floor, that can at least get, get buckets, can, can score. Um, so how much of it is just the system that's being run right now? We saw in Houston that, that string of, of years where it was literally James Harden, crazy usage rate, crazy numbers, not much success come playoff time. Uh, but this is a team in the Mavericks. They're starting to get involved in the trade market. And one guy, Dorian Finney-Smith, he's probably their, their best asset right now. He's locked in uh, for a few more seasons at a, at a good number. I'm told they've expressed interest to teams that we're open to moving him if it's a deal that could lead to a star. That doesn't mean they're going to trade Dorian Finney-Smith for an all-star. That means they're going to do a deal maybe for draft picks that could end up leading to a star player, um, and, and that's really where the Mavericks' focus has been, is that when you look around this roster, Dorian Finney-Smith is a foundational piece, but that's probably a guy that you can go and parlay into a player that can add some talent on this team and be a co-star next to Luka Doncic. But listen, he, he became the, uh, the, just the fourth player to score 50 points four more times in a season. Kobe, Jordan, uh, and Harden. So great company, but he needs, he needs some help for sure. Yeah, and I will say this, you know, I played with James Harden for those two years in Houston and as frustrating as it can be in some times because you you want more as an athlete, you want more as a competitor, you think that your role should be bigger and, and you could be having these games and be the headliner and as much as I wanted that, I literally left Houston wanting that bigger role. And when I got to Dallas and I was then this kind of second guy there with Dirk, it, it wasn't as sweet. It was not as easy. <laughs> and scouting reports and defenses were keying in on you. So it's easy to get comfortable and take a back seat when you do play with a guy like Luka Doncic or James Harden in Houston. Uh, it's easy to kind of let them kind of rock. And then that's why you kind of look forward and you see these guys have huge games when they go out. And Spencer steps up and has these 35-point games and get the win without him because it just kind of shows that – that's like a statement game for you as a player that I can do more. Like, look at me. It doesn't have to be this Luca show. But on the same side, when, when you got to go do that on a full season as that number one or two option, it's the grass isn't always greener. So it's it, it, it kind of works both ways in a situation like this. And Dorian Finney-Smith, I love Dodo. I think he's the perfect fit for a guy like Luca. He's a three and D guy. We all know Luca doesn't really defend at an elite, elite level. And Dorian <laughs> Finney-Smith does. But they do need more help and they need more star power to kind of get them over the edge. But as role players, I'm not giving up Dorian Finney Smith unless it's for something substantial. Wait, I want to I want to stay here for one more second, because Dallas is sort of in a unique situation, at least compared to a lot of other teams, like a lot of teams. Obviously, the whole point is to get better. Right. But not every other team has a superstar like Luka Doncic on it. He's young still. So they have that benefit going for them. But I don't know, Shams, can you. 
Can you touch on the stress level in the front office for a team like that that knows we cannot waste all of this time trying to figure out who to match up with Luca? Because year in, year out, he's in the MVP talk. But then what? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's strategic stress, right? Because when you look at this Mavericks team, last year they were just in the Western Conference Finals. So I think there was this grand expectation like this team uh, should be competing for a championship. Of course, they'd love to. You lose Jalen Brunson. That's probably a decision, you know, the front office. They could, they'd probably evaluate that 15 times over, right? They could have extended him last year. They chose not to. He ends up walking, probably took that as a slight that they didn't give him an extension, left in free agency, and then they don't really have another player that's really replace them they go out and trade for Christian Wood so you're trying to make moves to keep the, the this this train rolling but you know that you don't have uh, the necessary horses to go win a championship so I think when you look at into, into the summertime right now they have very little assets they have maybe one first round pick that they can trade right now they'll have a bunch that become available come summertime so you know if you're able to wait for the summer and have three four first round picks possibly go trade a Dorian Finney-Smith for even more first round picks and then take all those and kind of like what Minnesota did but but you know hit hit, hit but, for a bigger player better. hit for a guy that probably would fit yeah <laughs> you 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 said it Michelle not me but you know go hit for someone that can that can really make a difference and I think that's where it, it's a balance of patience and actually going for it it's 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 really what I said at the beginning Oof. strategic stress I'll say this too, like like, it's confusing the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Dallas has never really gotten that big free agent, whether that was with Donnie Nelson or, you know, now, but it's it's tax free state. Mark Cuban's awesome and can get you into multiple ventures off the court. It's a beautiful city. And now they have arguably the best player in the NBA. So it's, it's, it's time for them to kind of sign that big impact player and kind of take advantage of this Luca time. Yeah. Make a splash. I can't believe I'm saying that. Kind of understand why Taylor's Taylor like on Chandler, Dallas though. now. Wait, what you wait? What you say? <laughs> oh, you yeah, exactly. understood. So I kind of yeah. I understand why Chandler ended up going to Dallas. I think he, he sold me just now. Dallas ain't I know, so right? bad. It's like, am I in the <laughs> wrong town? I don't, I don't know. Uh, all right, we're moving on. Don't look now, but the Warriors may, maybe maybe something's happening. Maybe they're figuring it all out. Well, Steph, 38, 12 assists, win over the Thunder last night. Uh, three straight games with 30 or more for Mr. Curry. So look. They're two games over 500. They're now fifth in the West. Man, I love the West. Eddie, does it look like perhaps they figured something out? Yeah, I mean, I I don't even think there was anything for them to figure out. It's just focusing, locking in, and being the team they're supposed to be. Uh, I I think when you look at Steph, like you mentioned, he's had three great games in a row. Maybe he heard a little bit of the noise about people suggesting Shea should start over him in the All-Star game. Maybe he was, uh, you know, a little a little turned up for that. But this was a great game, a great game between two very competitive teams that are close to each other in the standings. The Thunder really gave it all they could, but the Warriors ended up pulling it out late, being the veteran team. And uh, Steph was incredible. Hit a huge three at the uh, down the stretch that essentially ended the game. And it, you can you can tell. They're starting to round in the shape. It's starting to mean a little bit more for the Warriors. And, and all of that's really cliche. But with a team like this, with a light switch like that, and a team has done it all, that's really kind of all it comes down to. We know what their talent is. We know what their system is. We know what they're capable of. It's just about them locking in and doing it and caring enough. And uh, they definitely were charged up last night and, and, and gave the young fellas a little bit of a, you know, a lesson in what a true contender is, I guess. Yeah, this is this is why we've been saying all year long we're not worried about this team. They have what it takes. They have the roster to be a championship team this year. Are they playing better? Is Steph kind of getting on a, a crazy rhythm right now? Yes. They still gave up 37 points in the third quarter last night, 35 points in the fourth quarter to, to an Oklahoma City team. Uh, so th- there's still some holes, and I think we're all just waiting for them to finally kind of hit that stride where everybody has a big game. You know, Wiggins is is in there having a big game. Jordan Poole is efficient. Clay goes six for eight from three. You know, once they start putting a string of games like that together while defending and Draymond's doing his thing and the young guys are contributing, then all of a sudden we start te- seeing that team that absolutely nobody wants to see uh, come playoff time because they do have that championship DNA. They do have that locker room, the culture. They've been there before. They're not worried. We're not worried. Uh, the Warriors are going to be just fine. This team has not only had, like, uh, you know, up and down play on the court, but, I mean, when you look at the year that they've had, they've been through a lot for a defending champion. You have 
really a traumatizing moment in, in the preseason with Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. And then you have your best player, your franchise player, the guy that now leads the team in uh, points and field goal. I think he just passed up Wilt Chamberlain last night and most field goals made in franchise history. Like, he has every record. This guy has a labrum injury, and he admitted, like, I might have to have surgery at some point, maybe in the summer, you know, if this thing flares up again. So Steph Curry's playing through it. He's playing at an um, amazing level. I think he had, like, what, 38 points last night. So they've been through a lot, and yet still they're here. I know the confidence level in that organization, in that locker room, is we can stand pat, we can keep this team as is, and we're going to be competing for a championship. And three straight wins, they've averaged almost 37 assists these last three games. So they're starting to play team ball, starting to find each other again, and I think that's only a good sign uh, that hopefully they can turn these th th this, this season around in a positive way. I'd have to imagine the rest of the West is like, oh, God, here we go. Denver, Memphis right now sitting up top. Golden State, as we mentioned, in the fifth spot. I, I, Eddie, you have to pick right now who's coming out of the West. The Warriors. They're the surest shot in my mind. And, you know, if, without the Grizzlies springing for Pascal Siakam or, or something along those lines, this is the best team. They just won the title. They just showed us they were better than two of these teams in the playoffs. It's how can you not bet against them? They've had marginal changes and their young guys continue to grow. So I'm going with them. And if they get the six seed, five seed, whatever it is, you do not Ooh. want to see them in the first, second round. It's dangerous for sure. What a bummer that would be. You've had a heck of a season as a team, and then here come the Warriors. They just sort of tread water the entire time. Uh, we're staying in the West for this next one. The Phoenix Suns, Mr. Bridges with 29 over the Raptors. He's had about 23 points a game over his last nine. That ain't bad. They're seventh in the West. We're still waiting on Devin Booker. Um, but when he gets back, is it fair to call this team elite, Chandler? Uh, elite, I don't think so. I think we, we've been talking about it again all year long. They kind of missed their window. CP's not the CP that we know. With Devin Booker missing this much time, it's tough. With all the DeAndre Ayton noise, uh, it, it's tough to call them an elite team. Are they a very good team? And with Devin Booker, can I see them making a run and contending for a championship? Yes, for sure. I love that Cam Johnson's back and he's playing healthy. I think Mikael Bridges is a, you know, a top three two-way player in the NBA. The way he can score, the way he can shoot the ball, defend. He pretty much guards the best player on the opposing team every single night. Uh, are, are they a scary team when they're fully loaded and, and they are a, a lower seed? No doubt. And you do not want to play this team. But with Devin Booker, they have a chance. Without him, I don't think they have any chance. You agree, Eddie? Yeah, it was kind of shocking to look at the game. And, you know, they have the Chiron and they show the team's records. And to see these records, I would have thought they were flipped. You, you feel like the Raptors <laughs> are better than six games under 500. You really forget that the Suns are even over 500. And here they are. And, and, and they play like their equal counterparts. They play a, game, a tough game down to the stretch. Are they elite? No, I think we just mentioned the elite teams. You know, you have your Denver, you have Memphis, and then you have Golden State. And I, I think, you know, they're probably around what the Kings are. The Kings are showing themselves to be. I know we'll talk about them at some point today, but, you know, they have their warts. And I think in the time that they've missed Devin Booker, they've shown that they have their warts. But with all that said, they've beaten the Grizzlies without Devin Booker. They've, they've managed to tread water without him, and now their best player is coming back relatively soon. He looked pretty healthy jumping around celebrating some of those plays last right. night. Um, you know, if they get something for Jay Crowder that isn't uh, Serge Ibaka in Jordan Norwa, Norwa maybe. But uh, as, as they stand right now, I don't, I don't know that, that I'd put them in that first top tier. Um, but they had a chance to make some moves, and they have guys who I think are enticing on the trade market as well. I mean, there was a shot of the two presidents last night, Ujiri and Jones, um, and they both have pieces, right, that people are expecting to be traded or be requested. So let's start with Toronto, OJ and Anobi, Shams. What's anything on that? Is he moving? So the, the, the Raptors are taking calls on OG Ananobi. You look at the Knicks, they're willing to give up multiple first-round picks for OG Ananobi. But another team in the last week or so that's emerged is the Phoenix Suns. I think they're a team that ha they have the assets, eight first-round draft picks at their disposal between now and 2030. They've got the picks. Uh, they've got players. They've got guys like Cam Johnson. You have expiring contracts like Dario Sarge, Jay Crowder. Can you put together a package for OG Ananobi? 
Uh, could you go get something for a Jay Crowder that can kind of replenish your bench? I think those are really the two pathways right now uh, for, for the Suns. I think the, the point guard search probably looks more into the summertime because right now the, the need is more at the, at the wing. They've got CP, they've got Book, they've got Aiton. Um, and I, I think with Devin Booker, the good news is they have traded water for the most part. They've won six of seven without Devin Booker. He's doing more and more. He's doing everything right now besides five on five. So the Suns do believe that he's getting closer to making a return. And the way he's played, how good he's been, I do think he has the ability to take this team from what they are now, which is a fringe playoff team, to a contender. Uh, but can they win it all? That's the question. Man, this deadline is fast approaching. If people don't start doing stuff, I'm going to get bored. What is taking so long, Shams? <laughs> I want things to start happening. It's always going to be a week of deadline. Michelle, I know, you know how it goes goodness, with deadlines. Can Everyone wants to wait. somebody be ahead of it? Oh, all right, fine. Uh, you know what? There's, there was a time where Nick Nurse could do no wrong. Do we expect him to stay up north? Is that the plan for the future? So he's got one year left on his deal after the season ends. And, and like everyone on this, uh, on this knows, you don't, as Nick Nurse, a guy that's won the championship in 2019, Coach of the Year in 2020, one of the best coaches in the league. You don't enter next year as a lame duck coach. But I know in talking to a lot of people around that team, uh, that organization, there's been a level of frustration at times, of course, with, with the season, but also toward Nick Nurse. And um, there's no question that his, sum, his future will come into focus this summer, uh, whether he's going to be there for the long term or not. Uh, there's, there's definitely that level of uncertainty. But he, listen, he's one of the best coaches in the game. He's proven it time and time again. But this team has the talent with Pascal Siakam, OG Anunoby, Fred Van Vliet. They believe they should be better than how they've performed this year. So how much of that falls on the coach? How much does it fall on the team? I mean, look, the rumors are certainly pointing that this, this Toronto team's not going to look the same here very soon. But then again, they could just be rumors, Chandler. Do you blow this thing up? I think I do. And honestly, it's a, it's a what have you done for me lately. And so Nick Nurse, we talk about how good of a coach, the championship run, what he's done. The People have a short-term memory, and they're looking at this <laughs> roster and this talent that they have right now, and they're out of the playoffs. And, and I think right now the East is too good. This team's not a contender, so I do think they need to make a splash, and they can make a, a trade for an impact player and still not have to rebuild. They can get better from this. They have the pieces. They're, they're young. They have a star in pass. Pascal. Uh, they have a decision with with Fred here. Uh, I like Gary Trent. They have a lot of pieces that teams would want. So I do think they should make a move and try and kind of get someone back to kind of put them over the edge or just kind of completely unload and get picks and go for the future and, and ride with Scotty and OG and keep those younger guys. So I think there'll be a lot of decisions here. It could go either way for them because they they can also kind of make a move now and just and kind of go win a series in, in the first round. I wouldn't be surprised that way either. But if I'm them, I'm blowing this thing up. All right. Ch you literally yeah, I, just I, covered I, everything I, they could do. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I'm blowing up. With Eddie. that being said, I'm <laughs> yeah. blowing it up. Okay. Eddie, you agree? Yeah, I, think, I think everyone can look at the blowing up option. But listen, like this team has always needed a center. Like what if you go add Jakob Pertl to this team, add him to, the, to your five, and you have a team, the starting lineup, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananubi, Pascal Siakam, Scotty Barnes, Jakob Pertl. Like there are already also had him, ways in, in – is that going to do it? I know, but it? they moved him for, for Kawhi Leonard. So that's a pretty different <laughs> player fair. to trade him for. That's a fair move. But, but listen, I, I, think, I think knowing Masai, he wants to win a championship. I don't know if he's just going to blow it up, but, I mean, that's definitely on the table for sure. Man. It is, I just, it is a very talented team just to blow it up like this. But also they are extremely underwhelming and, and not playing good together. Yeah, and our attention spans are short. I can't help but short. go back. Yeah, I can't help but go back to the summer and the moves that they could have made. They could have locked up the best player in the league, or one of them, and had a megastar there for really ancillary pieces. And now they're trying to figure out if they need to blow it up. They need to let their coach go. They need to Ooh. just lock into their young core. And it's just, it happened that fast. It just, it always Chandler, does, if you're Eddie. a player on the Raptors, if you're Pascal Siakam and you could have traded Scotty Barnes for Kevin Durant, how are you feeling right now? If you could trade for Kevin Durant, I think you'd do it at any time, whenever. If you can, you do it. And we see Scotty Barnes is, you know, after being rookie of the year, he kind of hasn't been that same guy. And, and listen, he's still very young, and who knows, he could turn into this absolute star. But, I, again, it's what have you done for me now? What have you done for me lately? And Kevin Durant can help me a lot more than Scotty Barnes can right now. I always thought that was a weird hill to die on for them. Like, not, not Scotty Barnes. I was like, for Kevin Durant? 
What am I missing here? I don't know. Eddie's not I telling us something. I would give my French bulldog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would sell my entire don't you family. Dare. I'm out. No, hey, I would throw in the golden no. retriever. I would throw in the golden retriever for Canada. Oh, not the retreat. Now you're gonna piss off all of America. What's wrong with you? You don't want the wrath of all of Canada. Like, let's not do this, please. <laughs> Wait, I kind of do want the wrath of all of Canada. Yeah. Let's be honest. I you think got that Canada, would be Canada. You got dog lovers. Chandler's hitting every demographic right. in the last. You know, this, this is a special perfect. week right now. It's perfect. It gets perfect. it. Oh. He gets it. <laughs> Sure. All right, the Nets. Look, they had a they had a nice night. I mean, it was a shorthanded Lakers team. Kyrie with 26, Patty Mills 21, saying afterwards that he thinks that from a big picture standpoint that they've worked out how to navigate this ship, um, and it feels a lot different than last year in that sense. Goodness, I would hope so, Eddie. Look, it, this was the big question: Were they going to fix it when everything comes back to normal? Have they solved all chemistry issues? Yeah, I think they have uh, as far as settling the organization, as far as distractions, as far as obviously the situations earlier this season with Kyrie Irving. Now, there's murmurs now that, uh, you know, Kyrie wants an extension. And then there's another report that says the Nets aren't even looking towards an extension at the moment. And, and you know, we are always on the cusp of more drama with this team, it seems. But but it is settled. And, and knowing the tone around the team, they are excited. You watch a game like last night, Patty Mills, uh, Cam Thomas, Daron Sharp, all have the biggest games they've had this season. And, and, and everybody's having a ball out there in Barclays. Kevin's jumping out of his seat celebrating for these guys. And, and you know, it's maybe it's no coincidence. Those are the names we hear a ton on the trade market of, of if, if they want to improve on the fringes. You know, look, this team, I think they know what they are. I think they understand their system. They know who their coach is now. Um, they're, they're growing more comfortable with each other by the day. Nick Claxton, who we're just looking at, continues to develop and be become a huge part of that as well. Um, yeah, as of right now, the drama is settled. Uh, will it have happened more going forward? The trade deadline's right around the corner. Kevin Durant is trying to figure out just exactly when he's going to come back. You have one report saying uh, they want to hold him until after All-Star, hopefully. Mm. And then you have Kevin saying on our show himself, would love to play in the All-Star game, would love to come back a few games before All-Star and get his legs right. So there's always opportunity for drama uh, in Barclays. But as of right now, yo, <laughs> things are great. Smooth sailing, beat the uh, shorthanded Lakers. And, uh, you know, look Better. like you're a contender once your best player gets back on the court. Yeah. If, if oh, the biggest tough. issue is if the biggest issue is your chemistry, you know, with the team and with your best player coming back, uh, that's a good problem to have. And and so the fact that they've kind of tread water, they've won games. Kyrie has kind of been been the Kyrie Irving that we've kind of known for the last, you know, eight, nine years. <laughs> Uh, it's been impressive, and having games like last night, like like Patty Mills and Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas was spotted smiling last night. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a rare, that's a that's a rare thing. So you, you know they're, yeah, you know they're having fun. Can you say all their chemistry issues are solved? I, I don't know, but they're playing very very well, and they're having fun, and that's what it's all about. And they have their best player coming back any day now. Yeah, I think they're in a, a pretty good spot, and you know. Just hold off on any of this contract stuff while it's a good thing. Coming up, are you buying that the MVP race is a two-man race between Embiid and Jokic? We'll find out if Chandler and Eddie can agree on that simple thing. Those nights where you're not playing a lot, it adds up. You have a week goes by, two weeks go by, three weeks go by. What were those times like, like behind was, the scenes dealing with those nights where you're not playing? It was really frustrating because uh, I felt like I could impact more. I'm used to play a lot and being a man and just – coming to the league thinking that, okay, I got drafted here, I'm gonna get a lot of minutes. It goes days where you, when you don't play, days when you think you should be playing, but you don't play. I mean, it's just a human nature where I used to get frustrated a couple of times, but I just never let that guard down. Well, that's a very honest, borderline sad moment, actually, Shams there with Jonathan Kaminga. And there were moments last season where I'm like, this kid is gonna be awesome. Like, what's the deal? And then. Poof. So what is his role on this team? Well, now he's actually getting minutes. He's actually in the rotation, and he kind of got the stamp from Draymond Green and Klay Thompson in December. He had a few big games. He had 24-5 and five against Utah. He had 19-3 and three against Boston. He had 14-5 and five against Giannis. So th there were games that he had and supplant, you know, cemented himself as a rotation player. Then he got hurt. But now he's back, and I think you're going to see him continue to emerge. I think there's still a lot of confidence within that Warriors organization that, you know, Kaminga – 
Wiseman, Moody, these guys can be factors, whether it's this year or years to come. Uh, it's looking a little bit more bleak with Wiseman, but definitely with Kaminga. Mm -hmm. He shows you signs on both ends of the floor, the way he, he impacts the game ath athletically, uh, can, can defend at a high level. Uh, against other point guards so I think I think he's got a very good role this year last year he didn't play much at all at, at, you know especially in the NBA finals in the playoffs this year he's gonna play yeah I, I really feel him on that interview this is a kid that was very highly touted who went to a situation that was kind of a, a, a very strange you know opportunity where they were high in the draft and they were able to get guys like Kaminga and James Wiseman and now the next year they're they're not really playing that much because they do have this championship caliber team and this kid's not used to this so it is an adjustment period but look this kid's 20 years old and and he's helped them win some games in, in his you know short career so far and he's a huge part of their future moving forward Clay Thompson Draymond Green Steph Curry they're not going to always be there and we're now kind of shifting to that next phase Days, um, and this kid is going to be a huge part of it. He's long. He's athletic. He has some crazy athleticism. Um, and, and again, he's 20 years old. So I think he's done great. It's a, been an adjustment period. But yeah, th this kid is, is I think he's going to continue to help them this season. And obviously in the future a lot. I know that interview just was so like sad. His body language was sad. Um, look, there's no reason why the Warriors can't get better as well. Are they looking to do anything Shams at the de deadline? I actually think that they're going to be pretty quiet. Um, I think that the guys that teams call about are, are these guys. Kaminga, there's some calls on Wiseman going on. There's, there's some call on Moses Moody. Uh, but th those are guys that the Warriors want to build with. Because like Chandler said, uh, the older guard is not going to be around uh, you know, forever for the next three, four years. I think they're trying to see how they can transition as well. And I think you need guys like Kaminga. You need guys like Wiseman. Uh, so I, I think it'll be a fairly quiet deadline for the Warriors. They're going to try to convert Anthony Lamb. He's played a lot more down the stretch of games and also play, playing in the front court. So uh, that's a very minor move around the edges that they might make. Was well, a trade deadline groupie. Boring. Thanks, Shams. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> God, I want everybody to just blow things up. That's how my attention span works. All right, you two. Time for a little you buy in that. And we start with the Wizards, who had had a moment last night, came in here to San Antonio, and finally, after 22 straight games of losing, beat the Spurs. They hadn't won a game here since 1999. They've best league in the best, six straight wins. I'm not even sure what I try to say there. Are they a lock for the play-in spot, Eduardo? Yeah, I think they're going to get into the playoffs, period. Uh, they're a better team than what their record shows. They're finally healthy. Um, and, and they're finally coming around with their offense. And look, I know a win against the Spurs is a win against the Spurs. I'm sorry, Michelle, but you know <laughs> you could see functionally how they were they were working out of the high post with with uh, uh, the big fella and, and 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 finding open looks. They had two big, <laughs> wide open threes for Monty Morris late in the game. And and yeah, there, there's a lot to like here with this team. Are they a contender? No. Uh, but the East standings are jumbled up just like the West, and, and I think they're going to continue to get better as the season goes on. They have a ton of veterans and, and some guys with some playoff experience, and, uh, uh, you know, Chris Stapps is finally healthy. And, yeah, I, I expect them to win to make it into the playoffs. And, look, six wins in a row. It's nothing to sneeze at. Not bad. Not bad. Yes. They're, they're on a heater right now. Are, are they a lock? No, I don't think they're a lock. No, I think they're half a game out of the playoffs. But I think the teams behind them, Chicago, Indiana, Toronto, uh, are just as good as them. And I think they do have the talent. I think Kuzma's having a great year. Przingis is healthy. I love my Gator guy, Brad Beal. Uh, there's just something about this team that hasn't meshed well, and they haven't really hit their stride till right now. But I like the teams around them too much, and it's too jumbled up for me to kind of guarantee them as a lock. But they're playing really well right now. And not to mention the fact, I think it was two weeks ago when we were talking about the possibility of moving a bunch of guys around from specifically this team. That's why sports are fun. Um, look, the all-star arguments, they're here because now we wait to see what happens. The Kings, Sacramento Kings, your Sacramento Kings, Eddie. Is it, are you buying that they deserve two all-star spots? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, <laughs> I think Sabonis is deserving of the starting spot if Zion has to has to sit. He, he's been incredible there. They're, they are leading the second best offense in the league, and it, it goes back and forth between them and and uh, the, the Nuggets at one. And, and they're the third seed. They, 
I don't think the Nuggets will get two. I don't know that Aaron Gordon is deserving. I don't think the Grizzlies will get two because they've had so many injuries and Jaron Jackson came back so late into the season. But these guys have been healthy all season long, and these guys have, have steered the ship all season long, and they've been great. You can't, you, you can't overlook 24 points a game. You can't overlook him being one of the best clutch scorers in the league. His, his clutch shooting percentage is outrageous. Um, and obviously Sabonis coming back with the broken hand and still keeping going what he's doing. And he's he's really the centerpiece of that offense, and he keeps them going. And it, it was to the point where when he fouled out last night, I was, I was worried. I thought they were going to choke that game up. And De'Aaron Fox does what De'Aaron Fox does. He took over. He, he, he kept them in it, and then he eventually pushed them over the top. Um, I think they're both deserving. I think we're going to be looking at kind of Dame Lillard versus De'Aaron Fox for one of those mm. last guard spots. And I would give the young fella the nod. I want to see him in the all-star game. That's tough Chandler. Dame, people love Dame. Yeah, I agree with Eddie hundred percent. I think, look, you reward a season like this and they're the third seed in the Western conference and the two teams above them, Denver, they're not getting two. Grizzlies. They're not getting two. warriors. They're not getting two. Mavericks. They're not getting two. So all those teams kind of bunched up Kawhi and Paul George, I'm assuming are in and, and maybe Aaron Gordon. But besides that, no one else deserves it more than Darren Fox and, and Sabonis, the numbers they're putting up, the impact they have on their team, the excitement they put back in Sacramento, I think no doubt you have to reward these two kids just for, for the kind of the explosion and just the newfound life, the whole situation of the Kings going back to the playoffs. Uh, and they would be nothing without these two guys and they're having fantastic years. So I, I think, I agree. I think Sabonis should be the replacement starter. And I think Fox, I mean, 24 and six on the 30. What more can he do? He's in. I love it too. Cause this fan base is having the most fun to have two all-stars. We just, that's uh, over the top. Um, the MVP race, you guys know the drill. We talked Luca a little earlier, but right now it's between Jokic and Embiid, at least according to FanDuel Sportsbook. So Chandler, is it a two-man race? Can we just at some point not discuss anyone else? Uh, there's there's too much basketball still to be played just to say it's a two-man race as back and forth as it's been all year long who knows maybe the Mavs go on an absolute run right now or the Celtics continue to dominate or Giannis you know a, an injury to one of these two big guys there, there's there's too much time right now as of right now today yes I think these are the best two players on two of the best teams and the seasons they're having are unbelievable and they're kind of doing it in different ways like jo Joel Embiid's like this dominating physical dunk on you player who has nice touch and Jokic is just kind of five man Euro point guard center. Like, and, and so it's fun to see that this spot who's kind of gone extinct the last couple of years, I feel like, like all those big men, you know, it, there hasn't really been a, 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 a center, let alone two centers that are in the MVP race. So uh, I, I think right now it is, but again, there's, there's too much basketball to be played just to give it to both of these guys right now. Yeah. I'm with Chandler. I think it, yeah, right now it's a two-man race. I think the dark horse to really look out for is Giannis. And I look, I've been arguing with Bucks fans for a day and a half now about him stat padding or not stat, whatever. He dropped 50. He he went after it. He said himself he went after it. But he's the he's the one to, to look out for. They're second in the East. They are a great team. He's coming off his injury, and we know he can be productive. We know he can be as productive as these two big guys and, and put up gaudy numbers, and he's an incredible defender. I think he's the guy to watch out. If the Bucks make a push, you can start hearing a little more noise about Giannis. And, and for all the conversation about voter fatigue that we were having last year with, with Jokic and, and even a little bit this year, it seems like voter fatigue is dead. So if we're ready to give Giannis a third MVP, if we're willing to, if we're willing to get, anoint him again after he did the MVP defensive player of the year thing together, he's right there. I think he's the dark horse, not Luka. So, I mean, wow. I like those odds right there. Plus 1600. Well, I was going to say, not a nice, that's not a bad bet. Great odds. Are you, um, are you putting money where your mouth is or what's the deal here? How's this work? Hate, hate to like literally bet against my guy KD. So, <laughs> but, but I do like that bet. Well, you don't have to tell him. Good Lord. What's wrong with you? You don't have to say everything out loud. Like, <laughs> just, I got to live with myself. Just do it Michelle. secretly. I live with myself. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. Coming up, Eddie and KD are going to talk. That's all you need to know. Eddie and KD are talking. When Run It Back returns. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, Run it over. Run it back. You know what I forgot, too? We said before season, when you win 10 games straight, we'll have you on the FanDuel show. You won 10 games straight. And I just f***ing slipped my mind. So I had to. That was your word. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll come that? on when I win like 10 games straight. It's like, all right. Oh, I don't remember So we got to get that. you on. When you're back, when you're playing basketball. All right. Tell Chandler I said, f*** 
him too. <laughs> I will tell him. <laughs> Man, Chandler, you are loved universally. <laughs> hey, I will say that's not, that's a crazy stray I just caught right there. Right? You didn't even say anything this time. Um, look, I love that, I Eddie. Think, I think that was for Gator. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I, I love that. I love. First of all, he you have to hold him to this. P.S. Uh, but you guys did talk a little dunk contest action, so I want to hear what Katie had to say about that. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I was totally lying <laughs> about Mac McClung from run the G League being it. Run back the video again. I, know, I was going to say, can you just loop him <laughs> yeah. telling you to F off run over back and over the again? Video. Yeah. <laughs> Did it, was I he mean, for I mean, or against to, to, the G League? Yeah, to surmise, he had the similar reaction as us. It's like, this is the NBA dunk God this, not the G League dunk God this. Made quite a face as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, everybody's a little confused about Mac McClung being in this dunk contest, and and we know he's an athletic guy, and we know he's going to put on a show. But it's like, yeah, we want somebody from an NBA roster, and and more than that, we want stars. We want John Morant in this. We want, uh, you know, Zion Williamson. We want we want some of these guys that jump out the gym and and actually are going to play on Sunday, and and you know that's just where the dunk contest has went in the last decade. In that, we're not getting that, and these guys aren't incentivized, and they're not taking pride in it and and you know that's unfortunate and but I, I don't know how we turn the tide there um you know you would think these guys would want to would want to go show out and, and put on a show and and maybe we'll get that maybe we'll get that next year but as of now we're getting uh you know bench guys in a g-ligger which is unfortunate well no offense to your impersonation of kd but for for my own personal i would like to see him myself i know we have the sound now <laughs> No disrespect to the guys that are in there now. Shade on Sharp, we're gonna put on the show. Yeah, he's gonna be amazing. Uh, who else is in it? Um, Mac McClung. Mac Who's McClung, which is that's crazy. They doing that. <laughs> Out the G no, no shade to Mac McClung, but yeah, no it's shade. NBA but, dunk contest. What are we doing? It's how I felt. And Mac is an outstanding athlete. But I think he's been on the show. But it's what like, are we doing? Why don't we have four guys who are willing? It to? used to be sacred to be a part of All Star Weekend. Last year we had G Leaguers come in and playing in, the, in that in rookie summer. game. Now, we, like, what are we doing? So, yeah, but that's there a whole nother. There should be nother, some pride about it. Yeah, it should be some accomplishment, like you achieve something. But that's a whole nother thing. Truth of the matter is, it'll be more eyes if Josh say I'm going to be in the dunk mm -hmm. contest. I would want to see more. I would, I'd be more excited to see Zion in the dunk contest. Heck, yeah, I think that goes without saying. Look, so so we have Shaden Sharp Jr., Kenyon Martin Jr., Mac McClung and allegedly Trey Murphy the third's been invited, um, according to Pelicans media, but he, I'm not really sure why he hasn't accepted yet. Are you excited, Chandler, about this? I mean, not really. Just everything that Katie just said. This this is it, it's a sacred thing. It's an honor to be invited to the All-Star Weekend. And again, like Mac McClung, no disrespect. He, he has bounce. He's a he's a good dunker. He he's not in the NBA. So wh why are we putting him in the NBA dunk contest? There, there's probably guys on the street that do these dunk contests outside on outside courts that but why don't we bring them in too? Like, you know, at, at this point. <laughs> Um, Trey Murphy too. I don't. I, I've never really seen him dunk crazy like that. I'm sure he's bouncy. I, I know he's a great shooter, but uh, again, it's the dunk contest used to be something that guys looked forward to, and they want to see star, but they want to see their favorite players, guys that they own their jerseys in the dunk contest. And so, uh, I just think it's 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 first of all not going to be watched. The ratings are going to be very low. Um, but but listen, these kids they're getting an opportunity to shine on a national spotlight, which is cool. And these are kids that. Get Get, don't have the opportunity as these star players that aren't on the court that aren't getting big minutes that have rarely played on national tv this is their chance to kind of make a name for themselves so that side of it is cool i when i just think of the nba dunk contest i, I think of dominique wilkins and vince carters and and you know aaron gordon's people like this and this year it's 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 not that yeah i think it's it's supposed to be household names no offense to anybody obviously but i feel like that's what it should be um Guess what time it is? Fitter brick. I've missed this so much. I, I don't feel whole unless we at least get one of these in. And we start with that man right there, Nikola Jokic. Just Last rocking a lot of suits. <laughs> Business as usual. Yeah, he's... Is that a... Is he wearing you gotta a... You got to be brave to go with the hat. He's yeah, like well, I don't hate it. It's a little Peaky Blinders slash yeah. assassin. <laughs> <laughs> He made it a little sporty though with the tennis shoes.
this. Oh, sweet. I mean, I, do I even need to tell you who that Look is? No, Coles. I don't. <laughs> I don't have Look to tell at you Coles. This. It's bold. It's bold. It's confident. But but what's the temperature runway. outside? I just realized he doesn't have a shirt on. It's got to yeah, be cold out. Like it's, look, it's when you Dallas, got Mavericks back there, it's got to be some sort of chilly. So when it's you January. Got I don't care where you are. It's winter for God's sake. Hey, look, the, <laughs> the the knitted the knitted cardigan is getting a lot of a lot of attention, but those pants need to be discussed as well. Like, what is that <laughs> coat like? By all means, Kuz, I get it. You date a supermodel, you're, you're, you're a supermodel. Go for yeah, it. No, I get it. If anyone could pull it off, it's that man right there. DeLon Wright. Okay, I need to look at this a little bit closer. Is that a yeah. three-quarter? Okay. And he's got it's a shopping more, bag in hand. It's more, more about the accessories. Yeah, I like the I like the, the roll bag. I like, I like the baggage. The, yeah, the baggage is better than the outfit here to me. Are, are you taking that much stuff to a road game? Is, do you need all of that? I, you know, maybe they're He's, going straight. Well, maybe straight, they're leaving. Uh, they're leaving that day. Yeah, straight to the plane afterwards. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Don't judge. A lot of bag. A lot right, of go yard. Shop. A lot of go yard. <laughs> people shop in good cities. Uh, Jonathan, coming. Oh. Like this. I like this. Twenty years old, young dressed fella. like a grown man. Yeah. I like. I like the glasses. I like the the color. Turtleneck under the suits always Big a good fan. look. Nice cut, Chandler. Okay. Did, did, a, did a vet did a vet take you to get suits when you when you got into the league? Did Samuel Dallenbear show you where to get you know a the, custom tux for like Christmas? That the, the someone a vet would get to you or have like a tailor come and measure you up. But I never That's got fun. I never got like that like shopping spree. Oh, you didn't get your Julia Roberts shopping montage? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> never Next happened. Time. Next time. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. A and man, we just probably <laughs> won't need to talk about last night's parlay. But the good news, we start fresh today when Run It Back returns. Get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets with FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. All you have to do is bet $5 on Super Bowl 57. And if Gronk, that man right there, kicks a field goal live during the game, you'll get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. Gronk kick, you win. It's just that simple. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We had our parlay last night, and one of us did okay, Eduardo. Congratulations to you, Chandler. You and I suck. That's all it is. That's all I got. The fact that per Philly usual. didn't cover against Orlando, let alone lost by 10 or whatever it was, <laughs> I, I give up. I mean, in fairness to OKC, but, they were they were down by a lot more when I texted you guys, F this. So I feel good that they started to come back. Also, Giddy had <laughs> six assists, Eddie, so way to cut it close. Yeah. Yeah, yo, the oh. Thunder sat on five for like a good three, four minutes and then I did the foul thing, spot. so it was... What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you gonna it do? looked bad. It looked bad. Well, the good news is empires have to be built starting from scratch. So let's try it again, Eddie. Go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of shocked the Heat are getting this many points on the road against the Cavs. I think they're rounding in the shape. They lost their last game, but they're finally healthy. I think it's a good matchup for them. So I'm taking the points. I actually think they're going to win this game outright. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I like this one, too. Heat are playing well. <laughs> uh, I like the Clippers. Same thing. They're they're playing well. Uh, three points isn't that much. I feel like if, especially if Kawhi and Paul George play, which I'm hoping is the case. Uh, <laughs> I love them. It's minus three at Chicago. What a world. We're like, well, I sure hope their stars play. We'll, we'll play, <laughs> yeah. figure that out later. Uh, the <laughs> Lakers plus two and a half at New York. We obviously LeBron AD should be playing. They are well rested after taking the night off last night. It's the garden. It brings out the best in people. I, I don't do this often, but this is a lock 1000%. And I hate, I hate that it's the Lakers, but guys, there it is. 20 bucks wins you 120. This one's going to work. I could feel I like all three of these. <laughs> I like, I really do. I like all three of these. Did, did, Eddie, did Michelle you... think it was Wednesday and we weren't have to talk about her betting on the Lakers tomorrow? Like we're gonna, I know, we're gonna I know. remember this. Yeah. Trust me, we've all made I'm, dirty, look, dirty bad decisions in our life. This just happens I to like be one. <laughs> no, I'm not proud I don't of what's like happening. Own these picks tomorrow. Oh God, Chandler! Yeah, I hope I, that whoever hates on you today, um, well, it could be anyone at this point, and I'm kind of excited to see who it will be. Show us the trees. Show us where you are as we go out. I'm hitting the slopes. Chandler's literally living all of our dreams. <laughs>
That ain't bad. That's going to do it for us. We'll be back in the morning. Don't break anything.